Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box, and I'm here today with another episode of Witch Booktube. And today's book is one of the seminal books on modern day paganism and witchcraft. This book has been around for a very, very long time. It has gone through a couple of revisions. This is an updated version, but it's also still a little bit out of touch only because things change all the time. The book that I'm talking about is Drawing Down the Moon by Margot Adler. This is a, this is a serious, serious book where there's just... It's a lot of information. It's a lot to get through. It took me quite a while to get through this book, but I'm sure that most of you at some point have heard of this book. If you haven't, it's probably because you're young. <laughs> this book was published first in 1979 and it has gone through a couple of revisions since then. This particular revision, I'm having a hard time finding out when this was last revised because when you read the book, there are some chapters that she has kept intact and then added an addendum to share what has changed, how the dialogue has changed since then, in particular around things like feminist witchcraft and women-only spaces in light of transphobia and different things that are going on now. So there are updates going on in this book, but even still, there are groups that she mentions that are already gone. Like she talks about Witchbox several times throughout the book and Witch Fox sadly is gone. So it's revised, relevant, but know that there are still some things out of touch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is share her bio and then we're gonna go from there because there's just a lot here. Margot Adler has been a radio producer and journalist since 1968, pioneering live freeform talk shows on religion, politics, women's issues, and ecology. She lectures on the subjects of paganism and earth-centered traditions and leads workshops on the art of ritual, celebration, and song. She is currently the New York Bureau Chief for the National Public Radio, as well as a well-known correspondent on NPR's All Things Considered and Morning Edition. She also, she's also the host of Justice Talking, a national radio show on constitutional issues. Her most recent book is Heretic's Heart, A Journey Through Spirit and Revolution. This is what I'm going to say about this book. This is not the kind of book that you read to learn how to do ritual. This is not the kind of book that you read to find out what spells work and what spells do not. This is the kind of book to read if you are, est not established, but you are committed. This is who you are. You are a pagan in the world. You are a witch in this world, in the Western world in particular. And you are committed to learning about your lineage and the path that your practice has taken up until the point that you stand. This is a history book. This book gives you a lot of information about where we've come from and where we are going towards in the history of this particular broad sweeping lineage. And when I say broad sweeping lineage, I don't mean specific traditions because she covers very various different traditions and what their history is, but I'm speaking specifically to the fact that if you are a pagan or if you're a witch in the Western world, this is a history book about your people in some ways, but also what has led to who you are in this particular way right now? There is a lot of information here and it's hard to trudge through some of it. I'm not going to lie because it's a lot of history. It's a lot of history, a lot of details, a lot of names. You're tracking several different lines of history because she does cover various different groups, various different traditions and how they came to be. She, I mean, this is an incredibly researched book. This is very well referenced. What you have in this book is this beautiful tome of where did we start here in terms of groups that gathered, covens that gathered, those covens that then had broad reaching influence across the United States, across Europe, across Australia even. So it's all of that. And for me, a book like this, even though it's not easy read, not because it's hard to understand, but because it's just a lot of what can sometimes feel like dry facts, and her writing is fantastic, by the way. It's not that her writing is dry, it's just that this is just a lot of historical retelling. Even though it's not necessarily a fun, fast read in that way, it is such an incredibly important piece of work to know. You need to know what part of history you play in this long story. That is, like, it's almost your duty 
to understand what space you hold. And it's not fun. It's not like, oh, here are 10 love spells. No, but you need to know who you are and you need to know where you come from in that line. And so a book like this is incredibly important for that. This is, I think, probably the only book of its kind in that way. It's an incredibly intelligent book. It empowers you to understand your history as a pagan or a witch in the Western world. I'm going to read the table of contents to you so you have an idea of some of the things that are covered here. Well, in, in actuality, the table of contents is a table of contents. It doesn't actually give you even the depth and breadth of what's being covered, but it gives you an idea because there's just so much in this book. It's broken up into different sections like background, which is other neo-pagans, but I'm just going to read you the subchapter so that you you have an idea of what's going on. She covers paganism and prejudice, a religion without converts, the pagan worldview, the Wiccan revival, the craft today, interview with a modern witch, magic and ritual, women, feminism, and the craft, religions from the past, the pagan reconstructionists, a religion from the future, the church of all worlds, religion of paradox and play, radical fairies and the growth of men's spirituality, and then living on earth. There are appendices. So appendix one is scholars, writers, journalists, and the occult. Second appendix is on rituals. And then there's a huge resource section in the back, which I'm gonna really quickly go to. Yeah, this is like a 700 page book, 600 page book. Okay, in the resource section, there are a couple of these that are already outdated, but there are a lot of them that are not. If anything, this resource section is reason enough to get this book because if you are alone if you're a solitary witch or a pagan and you would love community or you want to know what is out there for me other than what i can find on instagram or facebook because sometimes facebook is just a dumpster trash of just a lot of reactionism this resource section is amazing it's got current newsletters magazines and journals to look into for this for witchcraft and paganism support information community and there's extensive information on all of them social list what it is, how to get in touch, what it costs, if it costs anything, what the email is, what the website is, a lot of information. So she covers current newsletters, magazines, and journals. The other section is on all the different groups that are available, available that are public, that are available to participate in, covens that might be accepting new members. Again, some of this is old information. She's revised it recently, but some of it is still very viable. This is incredible information that's not easy to find online. So you have different groups and who they are, what they stand for, how to participate in the groups all over the country and all over Europe and Australia, different traditions. So not only in this book do you get the history of modern day witchcraft and all its different incarnations but you also get a resource guide on how to connect yourself to the right group of people the right community for you if you watch the live ig videos that i put up three weeks ago when i was at pantheacon and i talked a lot about even if you are happy being a solitary witch which i am i'm i move around so much that i don't have an actual home community or a home group or a coven right now there's a lot of richness and satisfaction in being a solitary practitioner yes but you can never, never, ever substitute the nourishment, the connection, the support, the, there's like this buoying energy that happens when you are in community with people who worship similar to you, who have this similar ways of thinking, similar ways of seeing the world spiritually. I can't, I mean, just being at Pantheacon for that short amount of time and participating in two group rituals, which were phenomenal and incredibly transformative for me, you can't substitute that. You can have phenomenal transformative rituals alone, but it's a very different animal and that's okay. It's okay for that and it's important that it is. And so even if you are solitary, just to be able to have somewhere, someone, some group somewhere so that you can connect with, um, socialize with on occasion if there's an organized ritual to participate in every once in a while I am telling you there's nothing like it there's just nothing like it so a resource guide like this is fantastic okay so the next resource section are all the festivals and gatherings that she has had or that she's been able to collect she's got 350 annual pagan festivals again this number may be different right now Pantheacon just ended there is rumor that something else is coming up to replace that but Right, obviously, there's going to be things here that are not, but a lot of this that I've looked at are still happening. 
this is a fantastic resource guide. You need to know these things because dipping into a convention or dipping into a festival for a weekend or for a day, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss out on that experience. So these are festivals and gatherings. Oh, and then she has a listing of some interesting additional websites that have a lot of information. There are a ton ton of websites with great articles and things to read. Websites for both witches, witchcraft, and different pagan traditions are listed here. The book just for this resource guide is worth it. And then she's got easily about 30 pages of notes and there's an extensive bibliography. It's kind of like the witches pagan and pagans history book in western society. I recommend this if you're interested in doing your due diligence and understanding where in that history you fit and what has led to where you are here now. There are going to be a lot of very well-known names that she discusses and she shares about my own initial lineage. She talks about all of that, which was incredible to like read back on how that started. It gives you a sense of place. It gives you a sense of time. It gives you that timeline. It also shares different issues that have come up for different groups trying to come together and work together and practice together and what has come up. So listen, I can't say enough. This is one of those books where it's a lot. It's like homework. It's like going to school, you're learning history, but I think it's important. I'm still, you know, and I'm going to forever be pushing that if you're going to be a witch, if you're going to be a pagan, understand what that means. Educate yourself. You are never going to be powerful if you don't invest in educating yourself and understanding where you are in all of this context that we talk about in terms of the pagan world and the in the witch's world. So for that reason alone, this should be in your library. You might have to set, you know, some expectations on how long it takes you to read it, like an hour a day for a month. I have no idea. It was an extensive book. It also comes in audiobook. And I think that the audiobook is like about a 20 hour audiobook. It's not a short book, but it's worth it. It's worth it. And the resource guide is worth it. This piece of work that she's done has withstood, I think, the test of time. With the exception of those things that are outdated, but she then goes back and revise. Not she doesn't revise it, she adds to it. There are things that I know she revised, but then there are things that she left intact so that you would have an idea of what it used to be, right? She used that, what it used to be and how that has changed now, 20, 30, God, 40 years later. It's a 40 year old book, you guys. So definitely get this book. It's an important book to have. You also get some really cool photos of like, you know, some pretty big people, Z Budapest, Moria, uh, Sharon Devlin and Theos, books from back in the day of these seminal witches who kind of paved the way for us right now. It's important, so important. Oberon, Morning Glory, like photos by Selena Fox, you guys. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, get the book and learn because these are writers who are still doing work today. She speaks on druidry, all of it. Okay, I can just keep going on and on, but I just want to keep showing you these pictures because they're kind of fun. <laughs> they're so dated. I'm, you know, listen, I'm a child of the 70s. I recognize the look, but goodness gracious. It's just history. It's our history. It's our history. So there it is. I recommend it highly. I would actually give this a five just because of its importance. It's, it's an important book. So there it is. And it's also gone through several different covers. You know, it's been revised. Know that when you order from Amazon, I think that this is probably the book that you're going to get the book cover. But there are a couple of other covers out there that are not the, um, the latest revision. Just know that and look at the description. But I'll link below to this ed edition so that you have the latest edition that you can buy if you want it. So there it is our history. If you've read it before, we have a couple of seriously old school witches who follow this channel. I know who you are. You know who you are. If you've read this book, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on it. And I'd love to hear what it did for you. I read this very, very early on in the early 90s. And it was hard for me then. I wasn't really interested in it. It wasn't where my head was at, right? It was my head was at where a lot of your heads are at, where I want to learn how to do ritual. I want to learn how to do the spell. I want to understand what shadow work is. And so it felt dry for me in that way. But I read it because I'm just kind of like that student. And then I just read it again. And it still feels just as valid, just as relevant, just as important as I intellectually understood it to be then, but I just wasn't into it then, right? So there you go. Wisdom age does a lot to you. <laughs> I recommend it. It's a five. Links to all of it will be down below. In the next week, 
we are going to be having another book giveaway. So be on the lookout for that video. If you're not subscribed to this channel, do that and ring the bell or click that little bell button and uh, make sure to get notifications when we come out with stuff because our book giveaways are pretty epic. We do them every Sabbath and the next one's coming in about a week. So have a wonderful week. Read, keep reading, keep practicing. Let me know what you think and let me know what you've been doing down below and we will talk soon.